We're going to start there today. We're going to take that live look from Alta, which is absolutely stunning. As you look towards the Salt Lake Valley, just so you know, Theo and I can't get enough of this view. And they, Alta, ski area, dealing with the third snowiest season on record. And they're just inches away from spot number two. So guess what? As we had storms coming in, they're going to move up this line. And, you know, when all is said and done, that number one spot, we'll see what happens. But we've seen a tremendous amount of snowpack, and not just at Alta, throughout the state. As we look at our snowpack numbers, they really tell the story, right? As we sit at 192% of average for us statewide. Why we show this today? Because this is a big deal. 25.9 inches of snow water equivalent. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you melted down all of the snow, that you would have just the depth of water just close to 26 inches. 26 is the highest number that we have seen in Utah for statewide snowpack. And that was set back in 1983. We are hours away from breaking that, folks. And so here we go with these storms coming in, and that means the most moisture and a record snowpack on deck. As we look at those top five years, you can see healthy years. Utahns, you know what I'm talking about. 1983 was that flood year, and we talk about the flood on State Street. Theo, you remember back then, 84, 82, very wet years. But here we go with the potential for taking the number one spot. Now, we do have another storm system on the way. It is going to pack a serious punch and it is going to bring some snow. All this moisture helps us out. Newest drought numbers up today. And as you look at them, we've made tremendous progress on the eastern side of the state. Theo and I are going to step off here so you can see. 7% of Utah no longer facing drought conditions. 93% of the state's dry, 82% moderate, but the extreme drought, only 1% holding on in south central Utah. That's huge progress. So this moisture and this winter changing things around, hopefully riding the ship a little bit, making a serious dent. Red Cliffs Lodge in Moab, where thunderstorm activity is out there. Gorgeous shot over the Colorado River. And yes, we've been tracking those showers and those storms as we've made it through the afternoon, really fueled by daytime heating. And it's this line right here. We're going to keep a close eye on that because if it tracks over the lake and holds together, the potential for impacts along the Wasatch Frontier in the next hour definitely exists. We've got Provo, some mixed precipitation over in the mountains there. And towards Nephi, that snow squall moving over I-15, dropping visibility. So again, as we zoom in, Salt Lake up through Davis County, staying quiet right now, that could change. Jumping down to the central and southern portion of the state, we've got thunderstorms over Moab, snow over the southern mountains, and in the southwest desert, we've peppered in some additional storms. So showers out there right now, and here comes our next system. It means business. It is going to pack a punch, folks. We get organized snow that comes through during the morning commute. Temperatures in the 40s, only 45 for that high in Salt Lake. Usually this time of year, we're in the mid to upper 50s, 55 in St. George, but we are going to get even colder following this next system. We're into spring, but it's a winter storm and it means business. Future cast gives you an idea of that front progressing through the Beehive State after midnight when our winter alerts go into effect. Here's that band of snow for your morning commute. Look at that from 7 a.m. Cache Valley all the way down to Richfield. Theo, can you believe that? All the way to the I-70 corridor, we're looking at sloppy snow, which means winter travel for your morning commute. So a heads up there, you want to give yourself a few extra minutes as we watch the core of that moisture moves to the east and you think, okay, here comes the front and then we're going to be done. No, northwest flow behind it, cold, showery, and it's going to stay that way in central Utah and throughout northern Utah as we get through the afternoon. Temperatures drop about 20 degrees from average throughout northern and central Utah. So it's going to be a cold weekend on deck with daytime highs in the 30s. There are those snow showers by Saturday afternoon. So an active pattern holds on, and we're just like, here we go again. How much snow? One to five inches for the valleys. Mountain valleys at 4 to 12, 10 to 24 for the cottonwoods. So that number going up as we talked about for Alta and all of those areas. Here's a look at those travel impacts where you can see road snow and slush expected. Okay, as we look at daytime highs for tomorrow, those 30s for the Wasatch Front. It's going to be cold. Theo's going to wear his coat because he's adorable and he has one. 55 in St. George. Speaking of St. George, giving you a look here at the next seven days, we get 50s holding steady, and you can see drier conditions until the middle of next week. As we check out the Wasatch Front, boy, we get cold, folks. That's the only way to describe daytime highs in the 30s. Winds for your Saturday, a breakthrough Tuesday, and then here comes that wet weather Wednesday and Thursday. We want to say happy puppy day, right, Theo? We do. And we like the moisture, but be prepared for that morning commute. Glenn, Emily, over to you.